Hello everyone, I am Manisha Joshi and joining me here today is Ricky Weeks. If you haven't seen him on the Channel 4 News several years ago, discovered him at OneSpark, or if you haven't gone to the Downtown Library in Jacksonville, then you are about to meet one of Jacksonville's most amazing artists. Ricky, thank you so much for being here with me today. Thank you, thank you. You made me sound so good. Oh, like you're <laughs> wonderful. Honestly, just before this video, I had the pleasure of walking through your home and your backyard, which everyone is going to get a chance to see today. And I have never met a copper artist. So tell me how, as a Jacksonville native, you discovered copper and working with it. Uh, well, it started 35 years ago. I was at air conditioning company, and I was good at you know, welding, soldering copper together. And everybody used to say, I don't ever have no leaks hardly on free on lines. And I said, oh, okay. It just came natural. So before I knew it, I'm starting to make art. And um, the first thing I made was a ship, a wow. copper ship. But they had sent me, somebody gifted me a, at a balsa wood, a ship, like a model ship to put together out of glue, uh -huh. but I couldn't do it. I kept breaking it with small. <laughs> so I said, I can make it out of copper. And I did, and everybody, you know, all my friends were saying, wow, that's great. And I just thought, they're my friends, you know. Yeah, of course, they're going to say that. But right. they kept on, and people kept saying, that's good. And I said, well, I'm going to keep on making stuff. That's great. And before I knew it, I'm making all kinds of stuff. And mm -hmm. is it a medium that's easy to use? I mean, did you experiment with other materials before and discovered copper is the way to go? Because it is a very, I mean, it's not an easy material to Yeah, use. no, I never experimented with nothing, just copper, because I like the idea of it not rotten. It yeah. won't rust. So it did outlast me, and I said, I like that idea, you know, and it's not, you can bend it and That's form great. it to whatever you want to do. Yeah. You had told me earlier that you don't prefer, now that you've done how many years of copper work? 35. Wow. At least. Yeah. That yeah. During all these years, people have come to you, compliment your work, been fascinated with the detail, which we're going to talk about later, but you don't enjoy receiving a custom order. You don't want someone to say, okay, can you do this exact replica in copper? Right, right, you prefer working right. organically. Tell me what yeah, inspires you to get into your studio and work hands-on. And I like the idea of doing commission work. Yeah. I mean, I like the idea of, I just, <laughs> I just, there's no way I could do it because I don't know when I'd get out there and do it. Yeah. Just whenever I get inspired or something, I go out there and work on it. Sometimes on weekends, sometimes on weekdays, but I just don't know when, you know, because yeah. I work full time, so I'm just not sure when I'm available. And when they say, hey, well, can you do this? How long will it take you? I have no idea. Yeah. You know, I'll get it done eventually, but I can't. They don't want to hear that. I don't want to say, right. oh, it'll be a year. Like, no, no, you know. But <laughs> so I inspiration know. strikes you at any time. It does. A lot of time comes from friends. Mm -hmm. They might take a vacation. Okay. And they'll say, they send me pictures, and I'll say, oh, man, that's great. And everybody, you know, likes yeah. for me to, you can make this. I'm like, yeah, I'd like to, but if it's not something I really want to do, I won't yeah. do it. I just, you know, I like it. Thanks for sending it, but I'm not going to make that. I like thinking of my own things. That's you know? great. But I do get inspired by their, I might look at something they sent and then, you know, just go a little bit further with it. Like, hey, I do that and yeah. then something else with this, you know. That's awesome. But, yeah. What on average, and I know you've done everything from, you know, plates for outlets, you've done some, yeah. you've done ships, we're going to get into this piece, which is one of your latest. Mm -hmm. On average, is there a certain amount of hours that you dedicate or weeks or because just like you said, you don't have a set amount of time that you say, okay, it's Monday, I want to get this done. You kind of free flow through your time. Right, right. Yeah, I just, um, you know, a lot of people, how long did take you to make yeah. this and that's so hard to answer like there's start no thinking time. about it there's yeah. no average time and usually I put so many hours into it and I tried to guess like this my last piece yeah. I made here I can guess roughly okay you know just like if I worked eight hours a day on it, which I don't <laughs> but if I did it'd probably be you know probably through all the thought and yeah. the technique probably a couple hundred hours I was gonna so know. tell us about this piece because this is I mean your detail in this, in each of the feathers, the claws, the fe this yeah. is amazing. I'm yeah, going to say this must have taken many, many Yeah, it took a lot. Hours. Um, what inspired you about this piece? I always like, I've got an owl up okay. in front of my house, and people really like the owl, and I said, that was fun making it. And I said, I'd like to make a 
you know, an eagle or something. Yeah. And then I said, well, darn, I want to put a fish in it. So at first I started putting the fish together, but it, everything I do, my wife tells me, I start off small, I want it small, and then it ends up, by the time I'm finished, it's big. I'm like, <laughs> I can't put that fish in its claws. That looks really, it's not proportional. Gotcha. So I have a hard time with keeping everything proportional. Yeah. That's one of the hardest things. So I had to make another fish. And it still ended up a little bit bigger than I like, but it's fine now. But I, I mean, just the, but the detail of your fish, just yeah, all of it is absolutely, yeah. I mean, these, just looking at this, this must have been several Yeah, it's got some hours. dragonflies. I don't know if you've seen that. Oh, yeah. Yeah, a couple of dragonflies. That's amazing. But, yeah, it turned out really good. I actually put some sand inside this to make it a little heavier so it wouldn't fall over. <laughs> but it's not This is a great. And I yeah. love how you told me that art and architecture are part of your family. And in one of your art pieces that's right above your head, actually, you dedicated to both of your daughters. How did right, that evolve? Right. Um, I wanted to make a wall piece because um, this was at the beginning. That's probably at least 20 years old, but I wanted to make something on the wall. Yeah. And I liked the idea of, you know, I had Lindsay and Allison, my daughters. And I said, I'm all, you know, kind of dedicated to them, and I put their names on it. So, yeah, it turned out good. And I tried to keep the roofs different on each on each building. No, I, I think it's, it's beautiful. We're yeah, going to take a close yeah. up of that in a little bit. Tell me too, so you were part of One Spark yeah. uh, so for both of those for years. Of and then years. you've, like I said earlier on Channel 4, you've been at UNF, you've been at various places in juried right. art exhibitions. What do people come and tell you when they see your art? I know they must be fascinated. Yeah, they, they, I get a lot of compliments, which I appreciate. Um, I hadn't had a lot of negativity about anything, <laughs> but they like it. But I've always noticed it's funny. I like, you know, I love the kids. And yeah. they look at it and their eyes get big. And, you know, and of course their mothers or fathers say, oh, don't touch it. Don't get near it. <laughs> Believe me, it's not going to hurt it. Yeah. You can't. If it breaks, I can just solder it back. There's nothing. You, you can touch it. It don't matter. It's, it's not fragile. Yeah. But it will. It's sharp. It'll cut you. So that's yeah. what I worry about. But as far as breaking, like they think, don't touch it. We don't <laughs> want to buy it. It's not going to happen. You know? If they did, I just whatever, you know, it don't matter. Now you have yet to really put this into a retail form, you know, and that mass merchandising is not something that you want to do, but have you had folks come up to you and say, oh my gosh, I want to see this in my house. Has selling your products been something you've thought about? Yes, I've thought about it and everybody goes there. They want to yeah. see, you know, I get a lot I have, of I have interest. my uh, name on a few things. I yeah, <laughs> yeah, you're right and I understand. Um, you know, it takes so much time for me to make it. I just hadn't went there yet, but I'm sure I will. You know, yeah. at the right price, or I have no idea what stuff costs. I really don't. I'm, yeah. I knew at price and stuff. I, I don't know. You know, I think I'd price it too cheap. And my <laughs> wife's told me before, like, you've got to say something more than that. I'm like, well, I don't know. You know, I don't want to give it away, <laughs> but I don't want to charge somebody something ridiculous. You know, yeah. I just don't know. Ricky, I am amazed that you balance all of this with a full-time job, that you kind of get inspiration when you're out and about, and you still have time to come home and work on your art. What do you do? I work for the city of Jacksonville in the building inspection department. But, yeah, I have all the weekends off, so it's not like I get a lot of overtime. That's why I have weekends free. And I'm more of a homebody, so I stay yeah. around the house a lot. And I just do copper art in my shed. I know. I can't wait to see yeah. your studio. Yeah, yeah, I like <laughs> Kinda it. Kind of see you hands on. It might on. not look like much, but it's everything to me. I got the TV. I got music out there, and I just really, when I'm in there, I get into it, and I'm in a different world. I really am. Wow, just, you know, that's great. great. You get into yeah. your zone. Oh yeah, oh definitely, yeah. yeah. All right, what music do you listen to? I just have to ask. Oh, I'm I'm still stuck in the Doors, Pink Floyd. I'm still <laughs> in the hippie days, you know. That's you know. awesome. Yeah. With copper as your medium, have you seen over time the price increase and where do you get your materials from? Oh yes, there's the increases all right. <laughs> I always I used to go to roof and supply houses and buy okay. sheet yeah. copper. That's, they come in three by ten sheets. Okay. And I remember buying them for eighty dollars. Now they're like three hundred and twenty five, wow. you know, four hundred. So yeah, and that's where most of copper I get. Yeah. It's three by ten sheets and it's twenty four gauge, um, sixteen ounce copper. So you're telling me this was once a sheet of copper? Yes, it's all flat. Oh my gosh. And of course 
uh, that just changes stuff. the way I look at this completely. Yeah, it was all flat, and I just cut out with tin snips, and I used tubing, wow. air conditioning, tubing copper, plumbing copper, and flat copper, and wire, anything <laughs> copper, but it's all copper. <laughs> That's fantastic. I mean, just seeing this, and I mean, even the hot air balloon. I love this yeah. piece as well. Was there something that you saw that inspired you to do this? Well, I like the steampunk. Yeah. And I, like, I wish I could do more of that. And it interests me, but I just don't, I don't know what to build. I like different stuff. I want to make something different. Yeah. You know, so UNF put that in their gallery for, I believe, three months and got a lot of response from that. But yeah, it turned out good. That's like great. That. Yeah. What's your, what's your future in copper? What do you see yourself doing? And this isn't an interview, so I'm not going to say, what do you see yourself doing five yeah. to ten years from now? But honestly, with all the art you've created, where do you kind of see yourself doing with it? Uh, honestly, I just want to keep on doing the yeah. same thing. Just keep making stuff and, you know, one day retire and, you know, maybe, you know, have a little, you know, maybe go to these art festivals and have a little yeah. tent and sell little things and stuff. I'm just not sure yet, you know. I don't know. <laughs> Would you ever think of teaching the art that you do have, passing it on and, you know, say teaching Oh, I'd or love to like if somebody's interested. Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah, that'd be great. So I think yeah. this is such yeah. an, a unique art that I have never heard of before working in copper and mm -hmm. I think kids today they don't have the opportunity you know with home remember home economics we oh, grew yeah. up having woodworking class and wood shop and all that and they don't have access to that anymore so I think it's kind of neat for you to go out and teach this if you ever decided. Yeah that would be great I'd yeah. be interested in something like that yeah you're right high schools have wood shop and they used to, they, yeah. I think they have metal shops, but nothing like this. Nothing like nothing, this. No, this is, this no. is amazing. Yeah. <laughs> all right, Ricky, so the golden question out of all the pieces so far, because I know you're going to keep creating, what is your favorite piece? My favorite piece? That is a hard question. <laughs> Can I name four? No. Sure. No. Are there top three? <laughs> well, I mean, I still like, I like the mermaid a lot. I don't know why. I always like mermaids. So yeah. I made a full-size mermaid. I like the stagecoach, which is at the library right okay. now. Um, I like the. Don't ask me that question. <laughs> There's too many things I like. If I'm making it, I really, really like yeah. it. Yeah. But yeah, everybody has their favorites. I just don't know. I don't well, know. you've got that. Yeah. Uh, it's a, what a seven or eight foot pirate that greets you at the yes. front door yes. that I absolutely yes. love. I yes. think it, more than anything, it's like, all right, I'm home. There's a pirate yeah. here. And you've got one of your biggest pieces outdoors. I Tell me about that. That's, that's uh, I don't know why I made it so big. <laughs> I, I wanted to, but I didn't realize I actually made it inside the shed. And by the time I finished it, I'm like, how am I going to get this out of here? <laughs> I actually had to cut the top plate of the door and cut down uh, to take wow. it out. And I had to get four people to help me. <laughs> and, yeah, it's, it's big and it's heavy. And it's still sitting back there. I don't, I don't so know. why a dragon? What was it about? I like methodical stuff. Yeah. I like things like that. I guess you can look around and see the, like the mermaid. Yeah. And the, you yeah, know, I got a go centaur outside. in the back that I really like. That's, that's one of my favorites, too. <laughs> but, yeah, when you walk in the house, you look to the right, there's a pirate. And I don't know if you notice, a lot of people walk in and look at the snake. There's a cobra sitting there looking at it. Yes, that, that greeted me as well. <laughs> and people will ask me, what did you make that for? I don't know. I just yeah. like different things. You know, and cobra's different. You don't see every day. No, so thank God. Yes, <laughs> yes. But I, I, I like everything. Yeah, it's fun. That's great. Yeah. What is your wife's favorite piece that you've made so far? I think she likes the stagecoach. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. She's told me about that a lot of times. That's great. And I, a lot of people like the... Um, the tree with the um, house on top of it, and it's got a little nest. In yeah. It. But yeah, yeah. Everybody's well, got their favorites if you ask them. But, I'm sure. Yeah. And especially yeah. because different aspects of your art take a different interest. I love how you, you know, incorporated your daughters into this piece. Yes. I love how, I mean, each several hundred hours, I'm sure, just yes. in these feathers yeah. and the detail that goes into every single. Yeah, there's Aspect three of layers of feathers wow. on each one, but it's not, it's not going nowhere, it's there. Uh, this is the studio where I work out of, my shed and back of the house, and this is where I create everything. Come on in.
There's no AC, but I got fans everywhere. <laughs> I'm gonna turn this light. And this is it. There's the flat copper sheets that I was telling you about, 24 gauge. And this is my workbench. I had to put some fire bricks here because I kept burning everything. I put metal on top of this wood, but that didn't work, so I put bricks been there a long time. Here's the oxygen acetylene and the torch I use. And when I'm starting to create stuff, you'll see pictures. I've got to go off something roughly, you know, so I'll put them up here, just something to kind of glance at every now and then when I'm working. <laughs> can you do a little hands-on demonstration oh, yes. with something small so our viewers can see what you dabble with I back here to make your masterpieces? Yes. I can do that. Let me turn this on. So we are about to see a live demonstration of how Reiki creates something small into something amazing. Yep. <laughs> Takes a lot of oh, heat. Oh, wow. That's about, what, 1,100 degrees? My gosh. So yes, I've burnt myself many a times. So Ricky, you were telling us earlier that this is one of your biggest pieces, and I had to come out here with my own camera to photograph this. Describe this for us, because this is just amazing. Yeah, I like to read uh, books about mythology, and I said, I need to make a dragon. And I want to make a big dragon, which it is. Yeah. And yeah, it just turned out good. A lot, of, a, lot of, a lot of copper, a lot of time. It took about a year to make overall. One whole year, wow. It took a good year, yeah, it did. But I was in no hurry, just whenever I get time. So, apparently you said that there's a secret inside of this dragon mm -hmm. that's kind of the basis for all of your work. It's a skeleton, I hear? Yes, you've actually got to make a skeleton because you've got to attach all the copper to it. So, inside of this is a lot of copper coils. And it just a lot of a lot of work, a lot of time. So it coils all the it way coils through. It coils all the way is... through, and it's got a backbone. That's one of the first things I made. Like a piece of copper goes all the way to the top. I had to form it up. Wow. So. So it's almost yeah. like you've got a dragon spine yeah. going through. <laughs> yeah. And on the centaur, you can actually see what I'm talking about because I left okay. some of it open. I thought oh. that'd be cool. To so. You can kind of see the inside. Yeah. Yeah. So this is the exposed kind of frame that you were talking about on the centaur. Yes, I had to make the frame and I started covering it up with copper and I was just doing a little at a time and I said, you know what, I like the way it looks like that, yeah. I'm going to leave it open so I can actually see. I also love see. how you kind of left a jagged egg, yeah, almost like it's ripped apart it. or yeah, yeah, roughed up. Yeah, it turned out really good. So this was featured yeah. in One Spark. Right, yeah. I took it to One Spark and everybody enjoyed it and liked it and took a lot of pictures. Thank you so much, Ricky. This was such an amazing interview with you, getting to see all of your art up close and especially just getting to know you and your history of how you were in the air conditioning business, discovered copper and said, hey, this is a medium that I really want to take somewhere. And my gosh, the art that our viewers are going to get to see today is going to be a real treat. So also your Instagram page you mentioned was Copper by Ricky Weeks. Copper Art. Copper and also your Instagram page that you mentioned was Copper Art by Ricky Weeks. So I can't wait for everyone to discover.